This episode of Out of Spec Reviews is brought to you by Magna. More on that later. Hello and welcome to a video that I have been dying to make for years. You join me in beautiful Texas Hill Country with the Ford F-150 Lightning. This is going to be my first experience driving the Lightning. We're going to go for our first few miles together. We're going to drive it on the highway, try Blue Cruise. We're going to drive it on a back road, see if it shreds. But the one thing to keep in mind here is this is not a performance vehicle. I mean, it certainly is on paper with uh, the amount of power that this thing makes. I'll walk you through all the statistics. This truck needs to work for America. And I'm not gonna take the time and explain what F-150 is and what it means to our country and what it means to, honestly, our entire culture here in America. You guys already know that. Everyone else reviewing this truck will walk you through everything you need to know about F-150 and its history. You guys know what I'm here for. It's the nerdy stuff. We're gonna get into the hardcore driving dynamics. I'm gonna show you what it does when you load it up in a corner. I'm gonna show you what it does when you inch forward and back in one pedal drive. We're gonna talk about regen brake pedal blending. We're gonna talk about launching it wide open acceleration. We're gonna talk about how comfortable it is to cover miles. And of course, I'm gonna take you to a DC fast charging station because I have some insider info about the charging curve on this beast as well. So we have a lot to cover. It's going to be a long video, uh, but we're first going to start with a full tour of it and then we're going to take it for our first drive. So let's go through some of the things that I think are important for today's driving review. Of course, I'll show you around the truck a little bit. For example, you can take a look under here if I can find the button. There it is. At the mega power front, everyone's going to tell you about this thing. Opens up, massive you know, 400 liters, big underfloor situation. Let's take a look at the charging cable, shall we? Because this is always an interesting one. Now, I believe it ships with a 32 amp capable NEMA 1450. Yep, so you have an adaptable plug-in here. You can go NEMA 1450, 32 amp continuous, which honestly will be fine for the most part to charge up this particular battery pack. Now, talking about battery sizes, that can also go into a regular wall plug, just so you know. By the way, this one, I got a lot to tell you about. Yeah, Pro Power on board, all the plugs. It's got 240 volt, 30 amp in the rear. This is the F-150 Lightning Lariat trim. And so I'll walk you through that really quick. If I just double click this, then it should lower the front trunk. There we go. Now that we're all closed up, let me walk you through the trim levels. So it starts with the Pro, which is sort of your standard entry level truck. And for your general consumer who's gonna be buying this every day, I don't think that's the model to go with. I think you really wanna go XLT or Lariat. That's the sweet spot in the lineup for me. Of course, you'll get the guys who want everything and no compromise. They want the most luxury. They want everything, biggest battery. And you can go for the Platinum, that's 90,000 dollars this one is uh you know so the mid trim specs the xlt and the lariat you can spec a small or a large battery they call it standard or extended and essentially the standard battery is about 98 99 kilowatt hour usable this is 131 kilowatt hour usable with the extended range battery pack and i think that's sized perfectly personally i would go with the 131 kilowatt hour battery pack which you need to step up into the xlt uh, and lariat trims to get it that is standard on the top trim the truck as it sits the one we are driving i specifically wanted a uh, lariat trim because i really think that this is like the sweet spot for our audience for you guys this is what i see going out out down the roads personally it's the one i would be most interested in as it sits this thing's eighty thousand dollars and a bit it's like 80,500 bucks because it has some really important options first of all the lariat gives you a little bit nicer interior it gives you some optional extras as well but take a look at this we have this pretty nice leather it's not as opulent as the platinum would be we've already done reviews in the max truck it's got the big sync 4a screen which i actually really like i like the standard screen too to be honest it's got the wonderful glass roof which i would absolutely want it makes it feel so big and airy we all know f-150 has a ton of room back here and let me show you the spec on this exact truck if you don't mind so just so you know what we'll be driving today 
And here we go, dual motor, 580 horsepower, 775 pound-feet of torque, of course, zero to 60 in the mid four second range. We have equipment 511A, which is one up from base, max trailer tow package, which is absolutely necessary uh, if you're gonna be doing any sort of long trips with a trailer and DC fast charging, because the max trailer tow package, more than anything, adds an entire secondary cooling loop to the entire drivetrain that is so, so, so important. And I was talking to some of the Ford guys about it too, and they're like, yeah, if you're gonna do like big towing, you absolutely want to go with that. So really like this particular spec, it's, it's I think, honestly, the way to option the truck. Now, a few things that I'll be talking about through the video today. Um, one that's really important is what's going on under here. By the way, big full-size spare tire. Look at those lower control arms, so beefy. See if I can get a better view for you guys and a fully independent rear suspension system back here. Something you're not used to seeing on F-150, but it seems to be totally fine. Little surface rust on that, don't worry about it. That doesn't bother me at all. Big meaty control arms, big meaty motor, big motor mounts. Pretty impressive for sure. So we have 131 kilowatt hour usable, a range of 320 miles EPA on this particular trim. If you get the big wheels that are on the Platinum, then it drops to 300 miles of range. And I'm pretty sure it's just a wheel change. I don't think there's actually that much weight difference between the Platinum and the Lariat. So I wouldn't really worry about that too much. They probably just, you know, opted to, I don't know, just lower that one a little bit more. Sometimes Ford does that. So we know it's got big power at you know, 500 and something horsepower. We know it's got massive torque at over 700 pound feet. But what, what we really need to know is can it sustain that power? If you guys know from Mach-E, especially on Mach-E GT, there's, it's very easy to get that vehicle in the turtle mode, driving it hard. It's very easy to overheat the battery pack um, and even hit this sort of five second limitation under big power. And I have confirmed with Ford that there is no such five second limitation here. They claim if you're towing, go big loads up big grades, no problem. This thing is sized correctly. It's a totally different battery pack and motor output and or sort of just total design from the Mustang Mach-E. We have two permanent magnet electric motors, no disconnect strategy here. Uh, and I think that's probably okay with such a large battery pack that there's no disconnect. Of course, you'll have some flex related losses with two permanent magnet motors um, because you can't really torque sleep them like you could an induction motor. Uh, but I think that's that's fine. And, and permanent magnet motors are great for big power at low speed. So you can really dump a ton of current into those things, which is great. Uh, you know, everything here is normal that I've showed you many times in F-150 Lightning videos. We have your 240 volt connection right there. Um, very interesting charging stuff here on this particular truck as well. So 150 kilowatt peak, although I have the charging curve and it'll do a little bit more than that. Uh, I, can, I don't know if I can actually share the charging curve. Either way, we'll log it for you. But it does not do the weird time-based charging thing that Mach-E does. They've learned, they've improved, and it pretty much sits from zero to, let's just say, 50% state of charge or so at 150 kilowatts. And then it sits, it hovers right around 120 kilowatts until you hit 80% where there's a ledge down to that 50 range. So still not a great vehicle to top charge, but um, it kind of almost looks like an e-tron curve where it sits, you know, close to 150 kilowatts the whole way to 80%. So it's going to be um, not that beneficial to do the out of spec style charger hopping from spot to spot because it just charges at pretty much peak all the way through. So we'll be char you know, playing around with that when we get the truck in Colorado. Um, fun little fact, this is the first ever Ford electric vehicle ever made, a little Easter egg. There's also a QR code that will bring you to a page that will be updated more. Similar charging port to Mustang Mach-E, nothing fancy except for the fact that it can do vehicle to load. What's really interesting is this particular truck with the big battery pack as an 80 amp onboard charger up from the 48 amp in the standard range, the 98 kilowatt hour battery pack has a 48 amp onboard charger. Big battery gets the 80 amp 
uh, it can do bi-directional charging. So the way it works is with your Ford Charge Station Pro thing at home, it's actually pretty interesting. It's a CCS connector for home charging. It does AC in and DC out, which is really interesting. So it can do like 17 kilowatts out, 19 kilowatts in. Um, but that, you know, either way you can, and you can hook that up to a lower circuit. So if your house doesn't have that much power, you can lower that down if needed. So I really like that it's a lot more focus on integration. You can use your cell phone as a key. The app connectivity is good. Sorry for some of the noise. We're just filming on location. It's just me today. Um, and this beautiful blue F-150 Lightning. I really like the Lariat trim. The Platinum looks great, but it's an extra 10 grand. And really the only thing you really get is massaging seats. Uh, you know, maybe there's a few other things, but this is the spec to have. It's got all the tech, it's got all the toys, it's got hands-free blue cruise, um, which also still works on non-pre-mapped highways with just normal Copilot 360. There's three different levels of Copilot 360. Standard in the Pro is just the safety stuff, forward collision warning, parking sensors. Then you can go up to sort of an assist function that will help with evasive steering and do a little bit more steering assistance. And then you can get what this truck has, which is the full suite of driver assistance, which I think is so needed because this is a vehicle you're gonna wanna cover big distance with. These 20 inch wheels, by the way, that's what we're rolling on right here. These are the, the wheels that you get with the extended range battery pack. We're on the road tires. You can actually option all terrain tires on this as well. So stay tuned to our out of spec overlanding channel because it sounds like tomorrow on this drive program, we'll be able to do a little bit of a rally course and I'll have that on our out of spec overlanding channel. I hope to have more videos here on out of spec reviews, but you guys know these first drives are a little bit rushed. We don't get too much time with them. It's more of an appetizer, a first taste of the truck. And uh, in terms of range, I've been driving the truck hard. We're about to jump in and go for my first drive, but I figured if you don't wanna watch the whole video, I'll give you a little sneak preview. Uh, it seems to be hitting EPA even with me driving it really hard. And uh, that whole story about having, you know, 2000 pounds of payload in it to match EPA, that's an accurate story. So <laughs> what do you say we jump inside? I'll get the settings set up. We'll go back to where I started down in San Antonio, Texas. We'll go for our first drive here in the F-150 Lariat Lightning. And uh, just can't even begin to describe how excited I am to drive this. Independent rear suspension, huge power, dual electric motor. By the way, locking diff on the rear, mechanical locking diff, which is wonderful. Uh, front open diff, but it can simulate with brakes up front. So that seems good. But I don't really think this is like a rock crawling wheeling thing. That's Leave that to the off-roaders. This is meant to do work. It's meant to be a daily driver, long distance cruiser, do what F-150s do in America, which is a little bit of everything. And um, I just think it's funny that Ford keeps saying it's really fast, it's really responsive, it handles really well. And I guess I don't fully understand why that matters to me. I really just want it to work. So we're not doing any of the towing stuff today. That's coming in a future video on this channel. This is just driving it with no payload, no load, but I promise I will have towing, hauling, whole bunch of other videos showing the onboard scales, etc., coming right here on Out of Spec Reviews. Now it's time for a super long video. Let's go for a drive for the first time ever in the F-150 Lightning. You join me back at the office with these incredible views to thank Magna. Now Magna is a technology company that produces not only parts for cars, but also technological solutions from manufacturing and design and engineering. They cover so many parts of the automotive sector and I bet you've interacted with a Magna product in your life before. Magna actually is very near and dear to my heart because their partnership Magna Steyr in Austria produced my first car, a Mini Countryman, and uh, it was built right there in Graz. A lot of you are also familiar, Magna's gonna be producing the Fisker Ocean in their Magna Steyr factory, and they also build G-Wagons, and nothing gets tougher than a G. So really excited about our partnership with Magna, of course. They are also hiring for engineers, so we know a lot of you guys are super interested in technology and automotive. I'll leave a link below so you can learn more about possible opportunities at Magna, but of course, we wanna thank them for sponsoring today's video and being such a huge supporter of out of spec. Truly, they are pushing mobility forwards responsibly and sustainably. 
Welcome to the inside of the F-150 Lightning. Genuinely about to drive it for the first time. We're in a parking lot with a whole bunch of other Lightnings. This one has 1,012.2 miles on it. Now you guys know my first drive reviews, we get into all the nerdy stuff. We're certainly going to shred it on great roads. Maybe I'll bring it over to a charging station, see how well it does. We're gonna try wide open acceleration, all that stuff. But it's important to remember that this is a truck first. It's an F-150 first. It's not intended to be a sports car, even though everyone keeps telling me how fast it is. To me, that's not the most important thing. I wanna know how it drives. And so had some long and in-depth conversations with some of the engineering team about thermal longevity, charging performance, things that I thought were sort of issues or pain points on the Mustang Mach-E that are slowly being fixed through software updates. Um, you know, that sounds like it's all pretty solid here, at least based off what they're telling me. Now I reset my trip calculation. It's predicting 307 miles uh, on a charge that's just with a full reset on the EV driving history. So again, that's we can't go off of that number because it, it doesn't mean anything. When we can, we'll run this in our 70 mile per hour highway range test that I run every EV through. And um, yeah, so, so important things to know here are I have one pedal driving on, I have auto hold on, I have wonder, wonderful displays here on the dash that show me the average battery temperature and the average motor temperature. I do wish that it would show front and rear motor temperature separately, but I'm, it just gives you a pretty good average data right there, which is pretty good. Um, let's go over to pull up truck info. And here is where I can pull up the power distribution uh, graph. By the way, two permanent magnet electric motors here. A lot of systems that, that use, well, I should say, let me start. A lot of electric architectures would be one sort of uh, uh, induction motor and one permanent magnet motor. And the reason is there are flux related losses when you're coasting in a permanent magnet motor. That means you actually have to apply a little bit of power to, which isn't perfect for efficiency. My sort of, and that's why Rivian has a disconnect, that's why Hyundai Ionic 5 has a disconnect, etc., because those are all permanent magnet motor systems, Tycon's the same way. Um, and my uh, uh, theory here is two permanent magnet motors, no disconnect, but I think in such a big battery pack system like this, it doesn't actually matter that much for efficiency. Again, we're not doing any efficiency testing today. Um, we'll save that for when we get it. So I have um, my shifter down here. I'm going to throw it into D for drive. And I think it's time that we drive the F-150 Lightning for the first time. We're under like an underpass and it's pretty loud. My seat air conditioned seat is the loudest thing in this lariat trim lariat trim may be the way to go platinum's like super nice like it's got everything but i don't know i kind of like kind of like not having you don't you don't need to be super fancy here okay so initial impressions <laughs> i got a lot just from that little roll but i'll tell you about it as we start moving so coasting throttle tipping feels pretty good a little bit more of a delayed response on throttle tip. And again, there's different drive modes. I can already tell you the one pedal driving characteristic is very similar to um, Mustang Mach-E where it doesn't necessarily grab the brakes at zero. And so what that means is it pretty much does everything the motors can do. See that? And then see how we're rolling Turn backwards? Right, then and then it first clamps down on the friction brake. So that is not good tuning right off the bat. And so perhaps it would actually be nicer to drive it not in one pedal drive mode. We'll play around with it, we'll see. So yeah, here we go, coming to a stop. We're rolling, coasting, then it grabs friction brakes. It's like, just do that when we come to zero, what's going on? So let's go for a drive. First off, steering ratio, pretty slow rack. I like that, very truck-like. I'm sure it's the same as the standard, but you can see I can put in a lot of steering input with not crazy amount of movements. It's like the opposite of a Model 3, and that's kind of what you want in a truck because you don't want to be making crazy harsh maneuvers everywhere. Wow, the suspension feels so interesting too. Fully independent suspension here, of course. The strong regen even at 100% state of charge, near 100% state of charge doing crazy things here in Texas. <laughs> there we go, full lock, it's nice. You really gotta palm this thing. You gotta, gotta work the wheel, but I like that. It's very similar to combustion F-150, so no complaints there. Wow, so silent, so silent. 
Typically electric motors, you hear a little bit more torque ripple, especially at low speed under hard regen like that. Not bad. Should we try the power? Again, I'm just in normal mode, so I'm just gonna nail it. Ready? <laughs> wow, that is the quietest acceleration I've ever heard before. And no traction from, the, we're on the 20 inch uh, all season tires and it just roasted the front axle. So it does the Mach-E GT thing where it kind of gives you a lot of power on the front. We're still spinning at 40 miles an hour. <laughs> so basically, you know, like way more power than you would ever need and like can't even get the traction down. So that's pretty interesting. I come to a stop, of course, I have auto hold on, but also in one pedal mode means it holds here. So like, wow, so many things happening all of a sudden. Fascinating stuff here. First off, one pedal driving, wish it was tuned better. Don't know why it's not, shouldn't be that hard. It doesn't come to a stop immediately. I, I hope you guys could see that where when I was lifting off, we actually rolled backwards like a foot or two before it clamped down on the friction brakes. It's possible that it will get better as we lose state of charge. So we're gonna play around with that. Although I don't think at that low speed, it would make too much of a difference. The powertrain, tip in, great pedal mapping in terms of where you get your powers where you want it again in normal mode these things will change with different modes and we'll play around with it but i have the truck in key up settings basically really progressive throttle adds more and more power as you go down all the way to full power so really like that shockingly quiet electric motors shockingly quiet electric motors i have and and no inverter whine just acceleration pure magnetic force it's wildly good also uh spent a lot of time you know sort of asking the the questions you guys want you come to me for the nerdy stuff so i'll give you the nerdy stuff uh totally different motors than mustang maki -E, and no five second limitation here they tell me that it can just pretty much run smack wide open all day no issue and i'm like wow that's pretty good so i'm sure there's a thermal limit somewhere However, if you option the max trailer or max towing pack or max trailer pack, I forget exactly what it's called. This one has it, max trailer tow package. This one's 80,589. If you option the max trailer tow package, then you get an additional cooling loop. I'm hearing a lot of noise from the sunroof. We'll close that but we're right next to a major highway, so it kind of makes sense. Uh, we're gonna jump on the highway here in a second. I did make sure everything's closed. Is the rear window closed? Yeah. Max trailer package essentially adds an additional cooling loop that helps with the entire mix of cooling. So I don't believe the motors have additional cooling channels, but it can do um, uh, more pumps, more lines for things to flow in, more hardware, physically different hardware, which is interesting, and uh, what else? Oh, a lot more heat scavenging. So no heat pump in this particular truck, which I actually don't disagree with. I'm not sure it's totally needed again for giant battery pack systems and heat pumps work in a very narrow efficiency band. I'm not saying it wouldn't have been better, but I just think for the cost and the mass production of this truck, just go resistive heating. I think they took the right uh, approach there. Oh, I just folded in the mirrors. Whoops, wrong button. There we go. You can fold the mirrors in at higher speed. That's pretty interesting. So we're going to go towards Laredo. So let's jump out in traffic and hard power. And just... <laughs> you can hear that Dodge in front of us, V6, by the way. So he's just telling the world he bought the base one uh, at wide open throttle and uh, wasn't even moving. And we were just right up on him. So no question, you don't need any more power than this. I think we all knew that. All the other reviewers will say it. I would not get an F-150 Lightning without the max towing package for myself. For a lot of people who aren't gonna be doing major towing or driving hard or quickly or you know putting the truck through its paces, charging rapidly after towing, then maybe you don't need it. But I would say 100% would go for it. Cruising down the highway, incredibly quiet. Still an F-150, drives nice and competent. Definitely floats, it's very smooth does the stuff. I believe I have blue cruise as well, so I can go here. Lane keeping system on. I need to set the speed. Oops. There we go. There we don't go. What's going on? This one. Set. There we go. Blue cruise on. 
It's been a little while since I've used the system. As long as my eyes are forward, then I don't need to touch the steering wheel. <laughs> Hands-free, love it. 95% state of charge right now. Love the data, love the instrumentation. Now it says keep hands on steering wheel because we're going around this sort of crazy complicated situation around here. Totally normal, think that's safe and good communication to the driver. Um, I'm, I'm really, really impressed with the, with the powertrain under acceleration. Let's just try some regen stuff by the way. So that's tons of regen even at high states of charge. I think I'll save a little bit more of the regen stuff till I burn it down a little bit. I'm gonna cruise down the highway in traffic, formulate some more opinions, testing stuff, different modes here or there. But uh, initial impression is sig drive significantly better than combustion F-150. I've driven every version, every engine configuration. Um, ju just the fact that I can <laughs> spin tires at 45 miles an hour is hilarious. I do think they should I don't know, I feel like they're giving too much power to the front axle, but when have I ever complained about too much power? Um, I'm pretty sure they're identical front and rear motors here, and that's what's leading to the weight coming off the front and you get spinning on the front axle, that's fine. Uh, it's kind of funny, you show your friends and you start skidding tires, like that's kind of a cool thing. No blind spots, easy to drive, Very, feels the same as normal F-150, however, so much less sort of truck shake over bumps and that's uh, to be expected because we have full independent suspension front and rear and and part of the reason you would want to do a full independent suspension on a pickup truck is so that the electric motor in the back isn't bouncing around everywhere right because it's in its own carrier and then it can pop its arms in and out but the motor stays fixed to the to the vehicle if you had a uh, solid axle in the rear it would bounce around now magna who is sponsors our stuff is actually developing a medium and heavy duty axle that would be fit for a purpose such as this one um, that that could handle the bouncing including an inverter on there which is pretty interesting but i would say based off of when this truck was engineered again they've been working on this a few years that technology hasn't really been out that long and i think they took the right compromise i'm fine with an independent suspension on f-150 lightning for the stuff that people are going to be doing with this which is a lot of cruising around general light towing uh and and just overall needing a utility vehicle rather than a max towing machine i think that's the right compromise to go irs front and rear so let's uh let's keep driving let's keep doing this i am just absolutely uh totally in love with with the driving dynamics with one exception and that would be the low speed stop and start everything else wonderful i'll catch up with you guys in a little bit but uh call me impressed right off the bat i've never heard a powertrain that produces so much torque with so few harmonics and residual noises ever. That's very impressive. And it's pretty quiet on the highway too for a truck. Very little wind noise. I can say the same about the regular F-150, but it's way quieter here. And the response is just good. Good response. Well, you join me now after a nice highway cruise, and I have to say, very, very competent on the highway. Almost a little bit undersprung on the front axle, I would think. It does a lot of this front end movement, but that's just the same as any F-150. It's comfortable. And so, uh, you know, a lot of you will ask, what are my initial impressions between this, the Rivian R1T, and the Hummer EV? I've driven all three of them. And uh, by far, this strikes a nice happy medium between the Rivian and the Hummer, but still all wildly different characteristics. The Rivian's so nimble, it's so hardcore when you put it in sport mode. You're not gonna get any of that here. I don't even think customers of this truck are looking for any of that. They're looking for a comfortable daily truck driver for a lot of people, or a work truck, that can just do what they need it to do. And here it does, and it kind of just rides as it should, in my opinion. Um, so one thing I really wanna talk about is low speed calibration, like real low speed calibration of throttle response. But since we're in this sort of mixed and flowing traffic, I really love just rolling into the throttle, getting nice torque coming off the accelerator pedal, getting braking. When I touch the brake pedal, it adds regen until it blends right about there. Still not the best brake pedal calibration, and what I mean by that is 
it's a little bit hard to gauge in the brake pedal when it's going to do a regen to friction brake uh, blend and how aggressive that blend is going to be. So for example, if I'm going and I just touch the brakes a little bit, yep, it does the Mach-E thing, which is a half a second after you touch the brake pedal, it goes full regen. It's not instant, which means it's a little bit hard to gauge a quick brake application uh, for deceleration. You almost get two deceleration points and it seems to be happening at every given point. So let me explain what, what actually is going on. When I lift off the accelerator pedal and I hit the brake pedal quickly, it's going friction brakes, boom, instantly. And then a quarter of a second, a half a second later, it blends in regen. So you get your initial deceleration of friction and that's kind of what you're asking for in the brake pedal. And then it goes, oh, here's all the regen that you would have gotten anyway off throttle. Now this happens in one pedal driving mode because it's trying to compensate for more regen. What happens when I turn off one pedal drive? Let's find out. Throttle on, brake pedal, much more natural feeling, much more natural feeling to the point where you get no double deceleration here. It just feels, just feels as it should be. And so I still think Ford needs to work on one pedal calibration for stop and go. But if that stuff really annoys you, like it does me, I don't think, I, other people I think are gonna be amazed by it. Yeah, really good with auto hold, one pedal driving off, really nice. Does it creep? It does creep, one mile an hour, two, seems to target two mile an hour creep, touch the brake pedal, nice and smooth. So if you're really particular about the low speed inputs, having really smooth braking and accelerator, I would turn one pedal drive off. The brake pedal is still a little bit springy. It's definitely, I mean, it's fully a brake by wire system, so it's doing all of the, the calculations through a computer, but I would say it feels normal now. And then the one last thing is yeah, I can roll it backwards a little bit before it blends in creep. So you can you can definitely rock it. I mean, you can confuse it if you want to, but definitely noticing a little bit of a little bit of rocking on the motor mounts almost at low speed. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I actually think I prefer to drive one pedal drive off in this. And then the amount of regen that I get, you still get a little bit of regen off throttle. Not much. But I I think that might be that might be the move off throttle hit the brakes blends in regen very nice that's the move for me one pedal drive off normal mode solves all my problems wouldn't hesitate buying one <laughs> personally really like the truck by the way cruising down the highway is wonderful everyone's giving you thumbs up left and right they're so pumped they're so excited and um yeah i mean it's just it, it's just an f-150 it's great it is the standard the gold standard pickup truck for good reason and uh, no no secret I'm a Ford truck fan always have been and uh, probably always will be assuming they mess something up but uh, Ford's doing everything perfectly well in my book going hardcore into electrification as a brand strategy um, their their displays are wonderful I like this new UI I'm told that there might be some feature changes coming to it to make it even better which I'm excited about and still can't get over the stoutness of the powertrain here, how smooth and responsive. That's what you get with permanent magnet motors. Of course, at low speed, you get a ton of ton of torque. There's a guy in his, his Cummins. He was just drag racing us there a little bit, but we could just go, see ya, roasting tires. <laughs> it's fun, it's fun, it's fun. So it's like an everyday work truck, but like, yeah, you can still spin the tires at 50, love that really cool all right let's go hit up some twisty roads and uh do some more stuff because i'm just absolutely thrilled by the way sound system is pretty good banging olufsen in this one um they never get loud enough for me but i like my ears to bleed so i wouldn't worry too much about that sunroof shade opened up love the big glass roof i would want the glass roof but i'm bougie i like all the nice stuff and i actually think the lariat might be the might be the right trim to go for it's about ten thousand dollars less than a fully spec platinum this thing feels pretty dang nice i have to say wow it's just refined it's like a completed product at launch without really any issues except a little nitpick on the one pedal driving calibration and that's it that's literally my only complaint everything else wonderful 
And by the way, I have the charging curve, which I will share with you later on. Even if we can't do a full charging session, I can explain it to you because our friends at Ford know what we're into on this channel and they're like, yeah, come on over here. Let me tell you about this. And I'm like, these guys get it. Cool. And uh, yeah, really, really into it. Love in Texas, by the way, San Antonio, what a place. Didn't know it was this nice. So you've gotten my first impressions of the truck, you know, me playing around with all the stuff. And I think now we should really just break it into sections. Let's do a urban sort of mixed driving here, suburban area, and then let's rip it on a back road. And then let's do highway stuff. And I wanna talk a little bit more about Blue Cruise and how it rides and from an NVH perspective. The first thing I'm noticing though is just in the reflection of the truck in front of us, um, I have the lights in auto mode and no matter what I do, I can't get the full light bar on the outside to light up. It might be a setting, but the running lights seem to be a little bulb, a little beam, uh, like, a, like as a low beam. And I'm not quite sure why it, uh, maybe it's a setting anyway this is all about driving first of all steering wheel wonderful size nice material here feels really good um, it's definitely electric assisted power steering i mean it, it, of course it is and it's there's quite a bit of steering bushing there but i have to say like for an electric truck that weighs quite a lot uh very responsive really nice feeling here the independent suspension in the rear makes a world of difference over a standard F-150, even driving around at low speed. I don't know if you guys watched the video, but we recently just had an F-150 King Ranch Power Boost Hybrid, which is about the closest thing as you can get to the Lightning in the Ford lineup because it's their hybrid one. First of all, really clunky transmission, very torquey, very powerful, but has to come on boost and there's a lot of lag and drama as it gets to the right gear and things happen. But most notably was it just couldn't get the power to the ground. It couldn't keep the tires on the ground over bumps. You drive on a dirt road and the whole rear ends all over the place because it's not IRS, it's just solid axle back there. And so here I'm noticing even driving on undulations on pavement, accelerating from low speed, making quick maneuvers like this around people. The thing is so much more planted, so much more competent, and that's perfect for daily driving. I mean, I, I noted when I drove the Rivian that it drives much more like an SUV than it does a pickup truck. This drives much more like an SUV than it does a pickup truck in just the way that it's controlling how the tires are staying on the ground and how it's basically maneuvering everything. It's tuned to be really soft, and I actually agree with that. I think the suspension calibration, you know, it's a fixed suspension. They took the right approach and no issues there. Uh, I've mentioned I prefer the vehicle without one pedal driving. Hopefully that gets updated over the air through software, but I think it's fine without it. Maybe on a longer trip, if I wasn't doing stop and go, I would kick on one pedal driving. It's just a setting so that I could have more off throttle regen because here you don't get too much, but then the brake pedals, blending points, everything here feels so much more linear, so much more natural, so much better calibrated in my opinion with one pedal driving off. The steering ratio is slow, the which is kind of nice. It just means you can actually put some lock in. You get to work the wheel, practice your hand over hand. I mean, it's just a, it's just is targeted to be a really wonderful driving experience, and you wouldn't expect anything less than Ford, uh, less less than that from Ford is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and then of course, just like accelerating up to the speed limit. I know we're not ripping on a back road, but just being able to. Do that and have wow sustained power that was a lot more than i thought we were going to do there and to have sustained power to high speeds wonderful so it makes driving this sort of like a cheat code in traffic right pickup trucks have always been slow to respond lazy typically the newer ones are turbocharged and you got to wait for boost to come on and for it to drop gears not the case here the response is game changing just to be able to go put your foot down also not much torque steer you can tell there's stuff going on on the front axle through the steering when you do that um, especially when you have a little bit of lock on but not bad and this is all just normal mode so now it looks like we might be getting on a little bit of a twistier just powering out of a corner in normal mode feels good i like it when i come from throttle to brake it doesn't do like an emergency braking thing like Mach-E does they claim it won't go into turtle mode if i drive it hard now we go into sport mode and even in sport mode with one pedal driving off wow targets so much more off throttle regen that is really nice 
I'm curious, it shows 0% here on the screen. I don't know why. I think that is supposed to show battery pack state of charge, but it might be a bug and it's not showing it. Let's see if I can change the truck view. Um, yeah, not sure what's going on there, but definitely shows 0% and I don't think it's supposed to. Anyway, uh, sport mode, big difference in pedal calibration just from response feels about the same when you go wide open. The off-throttle regen targets so much more, even without one pedal drive on, feels pretty good. Brake pedal, so a little bit spicier as well. Let's go one pedal drive on in sport mode. Let's just see how this feels. Full power feels good. And still, you get almost Definitely more regen with one pedal driving, but you get probably 50% of it if you keep one pedal drive off. And that's how I would probably drive it most of the time on a back road is sport mode on, one pedal drive off. Wow, feels pretty, pretty good target of deceleration there. I like that they do that too. Um, yeah, really nice. Throttle's a little bit spicier. The last 10 or 20% doesn't seem to do as much as it does in normal mode. And I think that's totally acceptable totally fine steering weights up a little bit you can see the suspension soft when i do this see the whole car just kind of floating around a little bit that's fine that's kind of what you want truck excuse me i can actually call this one a truck sometimes you guys get mad at me when i call trucks or cars trucks like small pickup trucks trucks and then you know this one's a truck so whatever you guys know what i'm talking about talk about the f-150 huge center console Okay, we need to try and go for a pass here, but we do not have the room for it. All right, let's go find ourselves some good roads, but I'm, I'm impressed instantly with the drive mode change into sport. I can also, I believe, yeah, you just go into the menu here and do it. I don't think you can use this. Like in the combustion F-150, you can use the dial here on the screen. This is the pro trailer backup thing that comes in that trailer tow package. Nice horn easily accessible, easy to activate. Let's go for a pass. Wow, solid power, not even going hard throttle, just rolling into it progressively. And it just does the thing that I want it to do. Feels good at high speed on these undulations. It's not doing the, the truck shake. It's absorbing all of the undulations in the road as it should front end's a little bit bouncy, a little bit wavy, but that's, uh, you know, just targeted being soft, of course. I would be curious how this feels with a lot of weight on the back. Front might get a little bit loose, but that's very similar to standard F-150. Let's just go up here, target a hard brake application. So that was full brakes. No ABS feel in the brake pedal. No clicking noises actually felt really competent and I just kept giving it more and more brake and it kept slowing down harder and harder. So let's do that again actually. Here we go. Full beans. Full power. Okay. It goes into the triple digits allegedly kilometers per hour and let's go hard brakes. Nice ABS calibration targets pretty good wheel lockup um, and, and a pretty aggressive brake application or a braking strategy to get that much lockup. Feels very confidence inspiring, but no pulsing in the pedal at all. And that's very common of brake by wire systems since the brake pedal is not really connected in any way uh, to the um, uh, to the braking discs. We are at about, I don't know, 80% state of charge or so, so I would like to try a launch, actually, and there is no one behind us after we whizzed away earlier. So let's go, not stopping on a crest, let's stop over here, see what the best way is to launch this thing, since we're doing some performance driving. So let's just pull right over here. Big regen, pulling back. Stop, left foot hard on the brake, flooring it with the right, torqued over, go. Oh yes, and it's just spinning tires, spinning tires. Gets full traction at about 50 miles an hour. Wow, even uphill, big numbers. No question, you don't need any more power than this. I'd put this up against a Mach-E extended range all-wheel drive. I bet it would smoke it. That's what it feels like to me. At least in terms of the sustained power to higher speeds. I mean, it pulls all the way to... to when free numbers show on the dashboard. Again, allegedly, kilometer numbers. Okay, very, 
very big improvements here. The electric motor temperature has just creeped a tiny bit and the battery temperature has stayed rock steady. So we're not even getting the motors warm by driving it this hard, which gives me a lot of confidence in its thermal strategy. Wow. And we're doing big, big power, big regen, thermal spiking the system. I'm not even seeing the gauges move. Whoa, that's impressive. I can't say I've ever seen that from a car before. Where, where this this level of, of hardcore, and I'm just keeping it right at max regen with the brake pedal, back to full power. And I'm barely seeing the gauge tick up at all. I am seeing max power cut though. It says 84, 95, 100%. So it cut down a little bit there. There definitely is a thermal limit if you do that but I don't see the battery. Battery temperature is just right of center. Electric motor is still in center. Definitely comes out of the corner pretty nicely. Big power, and then there's our regen. See this limit? It goes 185, 90. I hadn't seen it go below 80% peak power. So there is a derating strategy, just like every electric car, and we hit it. The big question is, would you hit it with a trailer? Mm, I don't think you're gonna be driving that hard with a trailer. It seems like it's really tuned for sustained loads, not the big peak. Wow, it's gorgeous here. San Antonio, Texas, you are beautiful. This is absolutely gorgeous up here in Texas Hill Country. Okay, I'm impressed, call me impressed. I like the derating strategy. I like that it shows you exactly the percentage of total power that you have, and then it goes back to normal. Looks like we have a quick couple corners around here, here in beautiful Texas Hill Country. This is absolutely wonderful. What a great place for this truck too, and everyone just seems fascinated driving by the road. Everyone's doing these head turns. So, corners coming up, we're big power on the way in. Okay, big brakes on the way. It's fun to watch the power distribution curves go. Chucking it in. Oh, big stability control input. <laughs> it shut everything down when I chucked it in. Oh yes, so the body movements are good. <laughs> it's moving around a lot, but the stability control systems are just holding everything back. <laughs> it's actually pretty funny. So like really nice and like great neutral balance. It just doesn't love to be pushed super hard. It's like coming into wide open corners like that. You can stand on the throttle. It does great dual motor power, it takes a nice set. What it doesn't like is body oscillation. So as soon as it starts moving around, it gets a little, a little bouncy mid corner. You have to make an adjustment. Uh, yeah, it just goes nope and grabs the brakes. <laughs> is there like a traction control off situation? I mean, this is not really meant to be anything spicy like that. So I'm not seeing it in the screen. Perhaps, let's take a look over here. I'm just gonna pull to the side. Perhaps there's a little spicy button. Oh, over here, great. So hold, traction control off, hold for advanced track off, and okay. Not that I wanna like slide it around, but I do just wanna get a better understanding of how the thing actually naturally moves. You do have to be mindful, this is a truck. It's not a sports car. You can't just be stuffing it into corners like I just did. I mean, you can. It felt pretty competent at it. Um, and like, holy smokes, it's just a lot, of, a lot of weight and it's not nearly as tight as a sports car would be. You just get it into a corner like so. Then it lets you do the thing. Yes, it feels just like driving a normal F-150 hard from a steering perspective, but then the rear end's actually settled down when you do that. It's really quite fun. <laughs> like, yeah, you can shred up a back road. The brakes feel really nicely sized, especially as it's blending regen, as it does, uh, you know, to before friction brakes, so you'll get some better brake longevity than you would out of a combustion vehicle just kind of get it into a corner and big power. Oh, and there's two other F-150 Lightnings. There's one, two cars ahead of us, and there's one just over here on the right. That is pretty cool. We go little hazards to say hello. Wonderful. What a beautiful place for a drive. Uh, honestly impressed with the handling. Again, I just think you just need to treat this a little bit more gently than you would a sports car. It's not unlike the Rivian where that you can just go full send way too fast into corners and it just hardcore figures it out. That's not this here. Uh, this is very much, treat it with respect, it's heavy, take a nice set, gentle on the transitions, but fast and competent. For example, we'll go, we'll hold back here because uh, there's a Prius going two miles an hour in front of us. They're cutting, they can't even stay in their own lane doing that of course, so let's go full power. 
struggling to get the power down, a little bit off, just taking a nice set through the corner, don't want to interrupt too much, braking progressively into a corner, big power on the exit, does a nice job getting power to the outside wheel, it uses a e-locker up front, and yes, it's very good, very good, you can shred it if you need to. But that's not the point of this truck. It's like, why even care? Like, let's go tow stuff with it. I don't know. It is fun though. It is, there is something fun about driving big vehicles quite quickly. And it definitely doesn't seem to complain. I would just go, and I'm not recommending that you turn any stability control systems off on the street ever. And that never happened during this test, of course. But uh, yeah, the stability control systems are definitely like geared for safety. Just, just be gentle with it when you drive it fast. Go slow in, progressively add power once you get the weight over. When you start coming out of a corner, when you're getting into the next, gently get the weight up on the front. No harsh movements. Everything here needs to be gentle, smooth, deliberate inputs, and it seems to reward that type of driving wonderfully. So, no complaints here. Um, I see a little spot for some spicy fun action, perhaps merging onto this massive highway and I was just thinking maybe it would be interesting to know for F-150 owners if we can kind of power slide it onto a road even with four motors so let's find out oh even even with even with stability control off if you get too much body oscillation it does grab the brakes <laughs> I didn't lock the rear diff although you can but yes you can do some spicy stuff traction control back on adaptive cruise on this thing set at the speed limit let's go back to normal mode for cruising and now it's just active steering one of the best parts about this vehicle is the way it cruises and that is because not only is it extremely quiet on the highway silent motors which is very amazing for permanent magnet motors and no gear train noise either because of course there's a reduction gear front and rear um, What's amazing is that you can go full hands-free if you need to on the highway pre-mapped roads, but it still works as normal lane centering on back roads that, aren't a, that are not blue cruise roads. For example, this isn't a blue cruise road and we're still cruising. So I'm looking at you, Super Cruise in the Hummer EV that doesn't do any lane centering and Rivian R1T on roads that aren't pre-mapped and these are pickup trucks they're meant to be used out here in the country for work and you're not going to find that many pre-mapped roads out here if i'm honest speed limit 70 texas is crazy and you can even set a speed limit offset deviation so i have it set to go five over automatically speed limit changed it went up to speed i'm just touching the wheel because it's not doing eye tracking and it doesn't do lane changes i can do those but as soon as i merge over to the right lane it should just lock itself back in and there it is, locked itself back in. Tight corner. It's doing it, it's doing it. Touch the line, but it's doing it. I mean, it's an impressively capable truck from a technological standpoint, which I definitely wanna dig more into when I can spend more time with it. Again, I only have like an hour or two to drive it today. I really wanna spend more time with this when we get it back in Colorado. And um, I'm just thrilled to see the progress from when I drove the Mach-E for the first time to today with the new product, the F-150, you can tell the team went, okay, we gotta get this thing right, and they got it right. It's really, it's got, got it all. So cruising down the highway, I guess we'll just talk about that here since we're here on the highway. We're on a non-mapped, non-pre-mapped road, which means for the hands-free Blue Cruise to activate, it needs to be on a highway that some sensors drove over ahead of time, which I think is probably okay for hands-free. The best thing Ford does though is allow the use of it, you know, a not. If I was in a Hummer EV or a Rivian, I would have to keep us in the center of the lane the whole time right now. Thankfully, that's not the case here. And I just can't reiterate to you enough how much better this rides for without payload, without anything in it, as a daily driver than a traditional combustion, you know, solid axle truck or like the Power Boost hybrid. Um, if you own a Ford F-150 Power Boost and get into this same generation truck, it will feel 10 years into the future. And that's not a bad truck. I love that truck. I recommend that truck to a whole bunch of people. I think it's a fantastic vehicle. This is just a whole nother level of F-150 that we've never experienced before that I've never experienced before. 
and the thermals seem to be good. The only weird thing is when you drive it like really hard, like when you're going full throttle, full regen, it does back the power off for short periods of time, but it recovers quickly. Don't know exactly what it is because the temperature gauges are staying center or just right of center and they thermal re thermally recover pretty quickly. It could just be, uh, you know, Ford being ultra conservative and that might get updated and opened up over software. I don't know. I'm just reporting what I find. But here I am just cruising along at the speed limit comfortably. And uh, you could you could cross the country in this, no problem. The big last question for me about this whole situation is the charging. Let's go see if we can find a DC fast charging station and discuss charging. Recents, Electrify America Walmart. Good, we don't need to charge on the way. Let's hit go. Pull the shifter back up. Foot on the brake. Uh, into drive, there we go. Love this thing. Man, just driving an F-150 that's electric is great. By the way, the turning radius, it's a big truck without rear wheel steering. So just take a look here. Not incredible. <laughs> if it's just the same as like a normal F-150 would be. You definitely need some space to go full steering lock. And I do need to put my seatbelt on. So there we go. Let's head back out on the road, get buckled up and head to the Electrify America station. We're gonna get there with quite a lot of battery, but according to the curve, we should still see pretty good speeds. Let's go find out. Should we launch it on dirt? Let's just close the window back here. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, this little window in the back opens up, that little center one. Let's just see what happens when we launch it on dirt. Good traction control. You can see it just basically fluttered the throttle just to keep it all pretty normal there. So, pretty sweet. Let's do it. And on the infamous Kyle Connor tour of Walmarts around the country, you join me at another Electrify America DC fast charging station. These look like the ABB units to me, and in fact they are. So let's get this thing plugged in. I drove it as hard as I pretty much could, um, you know, while going sort of big power, put it in neutral, friction breakdown. I really wanted to burn the battery down to take a look at the charging. Now, of course, we'll do a full charging curve test, but everything's up to temperature. I also want to mention that, oh, listen to that nice 6.0, sending it. <laughs> um, no noises here from this truck. I just want to say plug and charge. That's really nice. Also, it's like so nice to be able to maneuver around in parking lots like this without the clunkiness of the Mach-E. Sometimes the Mach-E will go thunk when you go reverse drive and it puts torque on the motors. None of that here. So much more refined. Forgive some of the noise around here. So much more refined driving experience. It just feels right cruising down the highway and stop and go traffic everyone's giving it thumbs up and that's really surprising to me because it looks just like a normal f-150 but i think there's been so much hype so much excitement around this that it just works by the way plugged in cable cooling's on no faff nothing like that just worked instantly which is wonderful payment authorized i can see the check mark on the screen the way it should be forgive some of the wind noise here let's run around and see how we're doing Let's take a look at our charging speeds. We also need to check to see if the truck shows us any charging speeds because that's very important. Initiating charging. Come on, baby. Plug and charge isn't fast, but at least it works nowadays, at least. So here we go. I can, <laughs> I can smell a whiff of brakes from around here. We definitely bedded in the pads for Ford. You're welcome. I don't know if the EA screen's a little bit laggy, but it's just as stuck on initiating charging. And it could, it could in theory, be charging. Let's take a look in the truck, actually. See if it says anything. I'll run around to the driver's side. Man, I like this spec. Just really feels right. Driving an electric, you know, normal pickup truck, not a small sporty truck like a Rivian, nothing crazy like the Hummer EV. This just feels right. This is what we've been needing. It says welcome driver actually it says mustang maki -E. take a look at that i don't know if you can see that right there mustang maki -E. here we are charging at 49 percent state of charge i'm not seeing any indication here as to how quickly we're charging Ooh, at, already at 50 let's take a look and then right after this i'll explain the charging curve as i know it 
Ooh, fans have kicked on massively. I can feel it sucking in big air. Come on, continue. Let's get 250 kilowatt hours of free electricity. Thank you for choosing Electrify America. You're welcome, come on. <laughs> this software, I gotta tell you, they really need to fix this software. It's so laggy. Come on, there we go, 172 kilowatts. Holy smokes, now we are talking, folks. Now we are talking. And so here, we're about four minutes in. We've leveled out to about 160 kilowatts. That's sort of what I expected, was to get a little bit of a peak and then for it to level off right about here. Similar to Mustang Mach-E, it's about 150 kilowatts into the battery pack and then 160 being delivered. Of course, there's losses. So if we take about, I don't know, eight to 10% losses, it's just under 150 kilowatts going into the battery pack. Again, 131 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. Uh, what I'm really curious is what happens at 80%. So I do know that it has a ledge like a Mach-E at 80%, although Ford tells me it's not as as bad. So I'm going to charge here until we hit 80, 81%. I'm actually supposed to have the truck back to Ford now, but um, they can come and take it from me. We are here doing research. We got to see what happens when we charge it. This is the stuff we all want to know. Interesting. I'm taking a look at the skid plate under here. You see this? A lot of empty space going on around here. That's kind of a interesting setup. Fans are absolutely ripping. So let's just see if there's any menus that we can find on the charging inside of the truck here. So sitting inside, hit the start button to start press brake, okay. We don't need to actually start it. Full accessory power active. Can we get air conditioning? Yes, very nice, wall charging, that's wonderful. I don't know why it doesn't show you kilowatts. We've gotten to the point where I think we all understand kilowatts is not that technical, people. So if I go here, and it's a little slow. If I go Pro Power on board, there should be a charging menu. Boom. Okay, so it says fast charging, but it doesn't show us how fast. What's up with that? You can set a max charging limit to 100%. Well, we're going to go, you know, save setting. So we'll just do a full charge. Updating. Now it says 7.13 p.m. And I find those to be a little bit not so accurate in the Mustang Mach-E. So it says an hour and a half to full. So we know it's going to taper real hard up top. Uh, and I guess there's no way for us to know in the car the kilowatt rate. Same as Mach-E. Okay, that's kind of annoying. Love the truck. Please give us more information. We need the expert menus, folks. There's so many people that just need to know these things, and that's not a piece of information you should hide, in my opinion. All right, touch to return. Let's see what we're doing. Hell yeah, 142 still, still rocking. Now, my understanding, actually, let me walk you through the charging curves that Ford has shown me. I don't know if I'll be able to display them to you. I hope I can overlay it but I'll at least recite them to you by memory. So we saw a peak of 173 kilowatts delivered to the vehicle, which is amazing. Uh, more than I think I've even seen on Maki. I think I've seen a peak of 164 kilowatts. Again, that's delivered, that's not to the battery pack. I had the climate conditioning running in the car. It's ripping the cooling fans because I just drove the piss out of it. But it just seems like their thermal strategy here in the truck, I drove it so hard, it's 91 degrees outside. The battery pack temperature only went a tick above center. The motor temperature just went a tick above center but we did see that power ramp down when i was romping on it and i think that's just going from a peak to a nominal rating by the way it did hold at about 63 percent of total power and i could never go less than that i got i stayed in it for a while too just to see and it seemed like that was about as low as it wanted to go so my guess is peak and nominal uh still felt really fast at that state of charge like if you weren't looking at the screen the truck would still feel just fine all right so here's the charging curve as i know it uh, if you plug in, I believe it, they were showing me a, a kilowatt versus time based chart. And the time was zero to 40 something minutes. Pretty much the car's rated, the truck's rated for 41 minutes, 15 to 80%. 
just arbitrary numbers. And it's also rated the standard pack from 15 to 80% in 44 minutes. This one's 41 minutes with the big battery. Uh, you would think they would match up, but they don't, which is interesting. So anyway, a couple minute difference, no big deal. We got everyone interested in this truck. Everyone's looking at it the whole bit. It's kind of hilarious. Uh, they're all just breaking their necks looking at this thing. So my understanding is 150 kilowatts is what they were showing me on the graph. Although I think that was into the battery pack, not delivered to the vehicle, of course. And it would just sit there basically for like a half hour or 25 to 30 minutes. Like they're coming over. They want to, I guess they're going to come ask some questions about this thing. So you would, you know, basically go there and then it would dip down to about 120 ish kilowatts. And so I think that's kind of what's going on right now. Let me show you. So we are sitting right now at 135 kilowatts uh, charging here. It was just sitting at about 142 right up until like a minute ago. So it seemed to hold above 140 kilowatts for the last 10 minutes. What I don't know is that if that's the case, if I plug in dead, it might hold it longer, uh, but still 135 kilowatts this high up isn't bad. I mean, that's better than Mach-E, it's livable. I, I'm fine with this, although it's still not class leading. Like, you know, for, a, for an F-150 truck to do big towing, big distances, you're still gonna be doing 40, 45 minute charging stops at chargers to 80%. That's just, you know, charging is not this car's strong suit. And it seems to make sense because Ford is very concerned about warranty uh, and longevity. And well, that's, you know, the easiest way to protect your battery is just limit your crazy fast charging speeds. But the fact that a much smaller battery pack in like an Ionic 5 or EV6 can smoke this charging, at least we know the technology is available and Ford is actively choosing not to push the truck that hard. So it claims in about, let's take a look here, zooming out. It claims a 90% charge at 6.05 and it's 5.37. So about 30 more minutes to go from 70 to 90%, which indicates a real big ramp down. Oh, and there's people walking around. She wants to ask some questions. All right, I'll go talk to her. Good news guys, 15 minutes in, Cummins. 15 minutes in, still doing 127, that's pretty strong. I see no reason yet really to leave before 80%. And that's good because it doesn't charge amazingly fast, like the peak speeds aren't that high. It's nice that it has a pretty good average charging rate. And so I'm pretty psyched that at least it has, at least seemingly it charges pretty well. What I don't know though is what happens if we plug in dead because Mach-E has a time component where it will do certain seconds at a certain rate. Ford tells me that's not the case here. Still doing 127 kilowatts. And um, yeah, so this is one where you charge it up to 80% on a road trip. We'll see what happens then. And then you get to do big distances between chargers, you know, probably 200 plus or minus miles. And then, you know, plug it back in and do another deep charge. So just a different strategy than I like. You know, I, I'm a big fan of the really get it down to zero, get the huge peak speeds. That's probably not the right strategy here to road trip the Lightning. So here we go, the moment of truth, doing 125 kilowatts, still ripping it. Again, I see very little reason to leave before this point on a road trip. If the peak's about 150 to 160 into the battery pack, again, 170 delivered, I still think it's worth just skipping chargers and hanging out here, get a bite to eat, something like that on a long trip. Really not a bad curve, but what's going to happen here momentarily? Let's wait and find out. 80% state of charge is reached. Still doing, well, there we go. <laughs> so it drops to 60 which is probably about 55 into the battery pack because again, the charger is compensating for cooling power. Cables definitely pumping coolant. And uh, yeah, so, so 60 kilowatts at 80%. So this is a charge to 80 and leave kind of vehicle. Definitely do not wanna be sitting around at a charger at or after 80% state of charge. My guess is if the cooling fans weren't running so hard, we'd see again about 55 kilowatts. It's probably got a pretty beefy cooling system with the max tow capacity. Yep, and just sitting right there at 60. Okay, well, let me share my final thoughts. Let's get this back to where it needs to go. And uh, man, it just feels so right to be electric. After the charging session, you can see the battery pack average temperature has risen highest point we've seen it today, but that makes sense. It's 91 degrees. We charged in a pretty high state of charge and it held pretty good speed. So I like their cooling logic. Definitely seems so much more robust 
than Mach E to me. Really, really pleased with that charging session, considering going into the fact knowing it's a 400 volt system from a very conservative company. Um, that's a livable charging curve. It's not class leading, it's not the highlight of the vehicle, but it's certainly livable. And uh, again, about 45 minutes from, I would say it's probably an hour from dead to 80, but you do get pretty good range because I've been romping on this thing literally here check this out actually so when i was driving the hummer ev not too long ago i was going quick but not nearly as hard as i was driving this and i was struggling to get one mile per kilowatt hour here i'm getting 1.4 miles per kilowatt hour and that was me doing everything i possibly could to get the energy out of this slowing down in neutral wide open throttle so serious improvements in efficiency compared to Hummer EV and uh, certainly seems to be on par with Rivian. I'd really love to see because I've driven the Rivian like this too and got about the same. Um, you know, we'll do all the testing when we get it back, but my friend Tom drove this yesterday. He said he got about 2.3, 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour, uh, which puts it right on par for 320 miles EPA. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I would say the efficiency is not a problem here. It's not in the Mach-E either. Mach-E has big range and this for sure has big range if you drive it gently or just normally you're going to get that 300 miles i think on a nice day like today without question so my final thoughts on the ford f-150 lightning i can't tell you how long i've waited to make this particular video to talk about how it drives how it feels how it charges and uh i have to say coming into it with expectations of mustang mach-e adapted to an f-150 body is um, basically that's not what's happened. And I think for all the best reasons, it has insane power. I do wish it had a little bit of a larger motor on the rear and maybe a smaller motor on the front because similar to Mach-E GT, it spins the front tires. And if they just put a bigger motor on the back, it could have transferred more power back there. Little things, who cares, right? Cause watch, <laughs> you just spin front tires anytime you leave a traffic light, which is obviously hilarious and everyone's like whoa where'd, where'd you come from uh so so that's interesting i think the drivetrain control let's just forget one pedal driving exists because i don't like the calibration is wonderful no clunkiness at low speed the throttle is is progressive i really like the standard key up setting normal mode whatever they call it um i think they just call it normal yeah normal mode i think that's the best mode to drive the truck in i think the ui uh definitely seems snappier and faster than maki -E, although still room for improvement uh i think to make it a little bit more uh, Tesla like to be honest I think Tesla is still the benchmark in the UI department I think plug and charge is a great feature to have it's now much more robust I know a lot of people keep seeing a video I put out a year and a half ago of a Maki -E having problems on a road trip that was all plug and charge related it's all pretty much solved it works so much better I think the thermal standpoint's great. I love that it rips the cooling fans as soon as I plug into a charger. No Rivian situation here where it kept overheating and I couldn't get good charging. This was just like, oh, I know what you're doing. Max the cooling fans. I would highly recommend getting that, that Max trailer tow package. I just think having the most amount of cooling power possible, the most amount of heat scavenging possible would be great. Again, I think I mentioned uh, no heat pump resistive heater, so a heat scavenging situation makes even more um, sense for efficiency, especially in colder environments. So I'm curious to see how this does there. Uh, overall, I think what I can leave you with is this feels right. It's almost as if the F-150 has been needing a fully electric powertrain for years because I don't know how, if I could ever get back into a, a combustion one and it not feel the way this feels. This is like the perfect drivetrain for honestly one of the best trucks on the market and it just fits so wonderfully. The range is big. The battery pack is sized correctly. It drives wonderfully. Don't think it's gonna be a, a ripper in the corners. That's not the intention. It's meant to be an every man's truck. It only comes in this configuration, a quad cab with the uh, standard size bed, which is honestly what I would want anyway. And so it just, yeah, it's all, it's all here. It's all really good. And uh, with over the air updates to almost every module, it can only get better. We have not seen Ford implement over the air updates yet in massive success, uh, or really, I think maybe at all at this point. I, they told me that it's starting to roll out this week, but that should have happened last year. So software is still an issue for the company, although much better than others. And, and 
they know what they need to do. And please put the kilowatt charging rate in the screen because we all need to know this so we don't have to get out and hit the charger all the time. I wanna know what's going into the battery pack, not what's being delivered to the truck. I'm just thrilled. I think the Lariat's maybe the trim to go for. If you got the money, get the nice one, get the Platinum, sure, get the massaging seats. But I think this feels right, maybe even an XLT. I'm not sure you really even need this big screen, to be honest. It's nice, sound system's good, all the stuff. Love Blue Cruise, though. It's all here, it's all good. I'm so honestly, genuinely impressed by the small things, the drivetrain control. I, I, I always found it hard to recommend Mach-E because I didn't love the way it handled considering going into it with a Mustang. The GT Performance solved that, and I didn't love the motor calibration, uh, and this, this solves that, and this drives just fine. So for me, I know you're all gonna ask, you know, should I, would I go for a Rivian, an F-150 Lightning, or a Hummer EV? I think the answer is the Hummer EV is not for me. That's an easy one to knock off the list. Um, I kind of think if it was just me and I wasn't a YouTuber and I just wanted uh, a truck to haul around town and bring LE places, this has a lot more room than the Rivian, a lot more capability than the Rivian in terms of space and size. And you can get, you know, the, the pro power on board, the bi-directional stuff, that's all pretty sweet. I don't know. I'm torn. I'm really torn. I actually, in the moment, I'm, I'm thinking I would prefer an F-150 Lightning. But again, I, I'm also just experiencing it for the first time and I'm excited. But, but that is big praise from me. Hugely impressed. Nice work to the Ford team. Not perfect, but so much better than I expected it was going to be. And, and a 100% recommendable to buy this truck from my side. There is nothing that would ever stop me from saying, yeah, don't buy that one. It's got X issue. Everything here is pretty minor. The big stuff, very well sorted. Thanks for watching this incredibly long video of my experience in the F-150 Lightning. I hope it's been helpful. I hope our style of not doing what the other reviewers are doing and just talking about the nerdy stuff is helpful to you, especially on these first drive experiences. We all get to spend the same amount of time with the truck on pretty much the same loop. And so I hope our strategy at Out of Spec is helpful to you. Uh, can't thank you enough for your continued support of the channels and can't thank Ford enough for inviting me down to San Antonio to be among the first to drive and review one of the most important vehicles of the year, if not the most important vehicle of the year. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.